Hello, everyone, and welcome to Key to Theosophy 19. It's a good thing you can't see the bloopers <laughs> to these because it has been, oh, the learning curve is like straight up. I have gotten a new camera to eliminate strobing, um, but I am still learning as we go. All of this is a labor of love. We've changed the name and things have been very, very busy. Yogi Theosophy, the name Yogi Theosophy served me for a while. Because to me, it meant aspirant, one who applies the union of higher to lower self, uh, not just through the physical um, exercises, but through all of the exercises, living theosophy. Because if I had only two seconds to live and two words to say, that's what I would say, live theosophy, living theosophy. So um, that's why the change in the name and lots of stuff happening on all of the social media platforms. Um, I'm only a, a student just like you on the same path, and I'm a former broadcaster, so I wish to lend my voice to something far more purposeful, so that's what I'm doing here. So this channel is not about me, the person, the individual, it's about the teachings, but they should always remain the superstar here, okay? So we are in now, um, again, really quick, I, I apologize in advance for any drama from the camera, because, uh, oh, it has been like two hours trying to set this new thing up and it has really been challenging. So if you see anything strange or weird, um, I apologize in advance. Okay, here we go. Uh, we're still in section five, pages 71 through 74. Uh, Prayer kills self-reliance. So what I do is I read you the book. I attach a link down below so you can access the original text from 130 years ago, written in question and answer form. And this is the best way to begin. If you're looking to study theosophy or find out about theosophy, it is not done with a brain, it's done with a heart. These teachings are ancient. They belong to everyone and originate with not one individual, but no one, really. Everyone and no one. So, okay. And they're not exclusive, they're inclusive. All right. Inquirer, we begin. But did not Christ himself pray and recommend prayer? Theosophist, it is so recorded. But those prayers are precisely of that kind of communion just mentioned with one's father in secret. Kingdom of heaven is within you. It's in these previous lessons. Um, otherwise, and if we identify Jesus with the universal deity, there would be something too absurdly illogical in the inevitable conclusion that he, the very God himself, prayed to himself and separated the will of that God from his own. Inquirer. One argument more, an argument moreover, much used by some Christians. And they say that I am not able to conquer my passions and weaknesses in my own strength, but that when I pray to Jesus Christ, I feel that he gives me strength and that in his power, I am able to conquer. Theosophist answers, no wonder if Christ Jesus is God and one independent and separate from him who prays, of course, everything is and must be possible to a mighty God. But then where is the merit? Then where is the merit or where is the justice either of such a conquest? Why should the pseudo conqueror be rewarded for something done which has cost him only prayers. Let's say that again. Why should the pseudo-conqueror be rewarded for something done which has cost him only prayers? Would you, even a simple mortal man, pay your laborer a full day's wage if you did most of his work? For him, he's sitting under an apple tree and praying to you to do so all the while. That's a very good point. Would you, even a simple mortal man, pay your laborer a full day's wage if you did most of his work for him while he is sitting under the apple tree praying for you to do so all the while? This idea of passing one's whole life in moral idleness and having one's hardest work and duty done by another, whether God or man, is most revolting to us as it is the most degrading to human dignity. It is revolting because it is degrading. Inquirer, perhaps so. Yet it is the idea of trusting in a personal savior 
to help and strengthen in the battle of life, which is the fundamental idea of modern Christianity. And there is no doubt that, subjectively, such belief is efficacious, meaning effective, i.e., that those who believe do feel themselves helped and strengthened. Theosophist. Nor is there any more doubt that some patients of, and it's in quotes, Christian and mental scientists, the great deniers. And there is a, a little mark here, a footnote. Now, there are two separate footnotes. One in the original text is shorter. I'll read that first. And then in further theosophical text, the quote is longer. So uh, the footnote is longer. So I'm going to read both. So you have both. Um, okay. Nor is there any more doubt that some patients of Christian and mental scientists, the great deniers, which means the new sect of healers, who by disavowing the existence of anything but spirit, which spirit can neither suffer nor be ill, claim to cure all and every disease, provided the patient has faith that what he denies can have no existence, a new form of self-hypnotism. Now, the original footnote ends there, but continues on in another edition of this, published by Theosophical uh, Groups Online. So I'm going to read that one for you. So you have it, but it's not in the original text. Okay. Uh, a new form of self-hypnotism, and it continues, are also sometimes cured. Nor that hypnotism and suggestion, psychology, and even mediumship will produce such results as often, if not oftener. You take into consideration and string on the thread of your argument successes alone. And how about ten times the number of failures? Surely you will not presume to say that failure is unknown, even with a sufficiency of blind faith among fanatical Christians. Inquirer. But how can you explain those cases which are followed by full success? Where does a theosophist look to for power to subdue his passions and selfishness? Theosophist. To his higher self. The divine spirit or the God in him. Now, he is not God. Side note here. This does not mean that man is God. But God is within. Okay. So the theosophist looks to his higher self, his divine spirit, or the God in him, and to his karma, which is not, I'm going to interject something, punishment or retribution as it is cause and effect. How long shall we have to repeat over and over again that the tree is known by its fruit? The tree is known by its fruit. The nature of the cause by its effects. You speak of subduing passions and becoming good and with the help of God or Christ. So you speak of subduing passions and becoming good through the help of God or Christ. We ask, where do you find more virtuous, guiltless people abstaining from sin and crime? You find it in Christendom or Buddhism, in Christian countries or in heathen lands. Statistics are there to give the answer and corroborate our claims. According to the last census in Ceylon and India, in the comparative table of crimes committed by Christians, Muslims, which they say is Muslim here, it's Muslims, um, Buddhists, Eurasians, Hindus, etc., etc., on two million of the population taken at random from each and covering the misdemeanors of several years, the proportion of crimes committed by the Christian stands at 15 to 4 as against those committed by the Buddhist population. Now, they're going to do a quote here from something I've, I've debated on bringing this up because I know that it, it can confuse. And I find this very ahead of its time for the year that it was published. There was a magazine called Lucifer. So before you freak out, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to answer all the questions that come in for this. Lucifer is a theosophical monthly magazine. Lucifer is not Satan. They are not synonymous. Okay. Lucifer is mentioned once in the Bible. And um, Lucifer simply means bringer of light. Okay. So I can understand why Pope Gregory wanted to include that 
and equate that to Satan. Because if you bring in light, you shine it in the darkest corners of the church. What are you going to find? Anyway, um, HPB had a magazine called Lucifer. And in that volume, Lucifer, April 1888, page 147, Christian Lectures on Buddhism, no Orientalist, no historian of any note or traveler in Buddhist lands, from Bishop Bagande, Catholic missionary and Buddhist scholar from Burma, now Myanmar, and missionary Catholic priest, Abbe Huck, to Sir William Hunter and every fair-minded official, will fail to give the palm of virtue, the palm of virtue, to Buddhists before Christians. Yet the former, not the true Buddhist Siamese sect at all events, do not believe in either God or future reward. So the Buddhists do not believe in either God or future reward outside of this earth. They do not pray, neither priests nor laymen. Pray, they would exclaim, and wonder to whom? To what? Inquirer, then they are truly atheists, theosophist, most undeniably. But they are also the most virtue-loving and virtue-keeping men in the whole world. Buddhism says, respect the religions of other men and remain true to your own. Respect the religions of other men and remain true to your own. But church Christianity denouncing all gods of other nations as devils, would doom every non-Christian to eternal perdition, which means damnation. Inquirer, does not the Buddhist priesthood do the same? Theosophist, never. They hold too much to the wise precept found in the Dhammapada, which is the Buddhist scriptures. To do so, for they know that if any man, whether he be learned or not, consider himself so great as to despise other men, he is like a blind man holding a candle. Blind himself, he illuminates others. So next time in section five, um, we're going to continue, which is uh, on the source of the human soul. So we're still going through section five. We're doing these in tiny little chunks and just a few pages at a time. Uh, that would be my suggestion to when people say, oh, I've read the Katie Theosophy. Or I've read Light on a Path. I'm trying to read The Secret Doctrine. I, I say, good, keep, keep reading and reread because when you revisit, you will find new um, understandings. You will see something completely different almost every time you revisit. So read digest, apply, tiny bits at a time, become these teachings. And um, on the, the Lucifer thing, I wanted to mention, because that's really, I, I think in the 1880s to have a magazine called Lucifer, you can understand why there's so much spin um, against this. There still is, even for me to say this, I'm sure I'm going to get slammed, but I do try to answer every comment. And I do understand that everybody is approaching uh, this from their own understanding. And I don't take any of it personal because it's not personal. How can it be? It's not. Um, Lucifer is literally a translation. The name Lucifer is a transla translation of the word Lucerne and Fere, which I hope I'm saying that right, means from Lux, meaning light, like Lumiere, um, and Fere, to carry, uh, meaning light bearer, to carry the light, like a flashlight in the dark, or a candle in the dark would be better than back there. Um, it is also the name given to Venus, the morning star. Okay, so you've heard that. Um, it, the name Lucifer does not mean Satan. Um, in the collected writings, HPB is quoted as saying, it is so absurd and ridiculous, the prejudice, indeed, that no one has seemed to ever ask himself the question, how came Satan to, bring, to be the light bringer? How did that happen? I don't understand. Um, the morning star. Um, it's written in Isaiah 14, 12. How art, oh, here we go. How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? So Lucifer, um, by Christianity, they, they equate it with, with Satan, though it is literally a reference to the king of Babylon. So 
if you can look that up without believing me, that's great. <laughs> I think you should look it up. Always question everything. Everything you see on any of these channels or anywhere um, that you go, look it up. Uh, and the um, the publication, Lucifer, published uh, by Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, the first issue, issue was in 1887. Uh, the journal, I'll read you here, it says, is devoted to theosophical topics, treating them with special reference to the intellectual aptitudes of the West and to the very problems, social, scientific, and literary, continually arising in the vivid activity of Western civilization. So um, there you go. There is Key to Theosophy 19, Section 5. And that is Prayer Kills Self-Reliance in this episode. But we will continue on. I try to get... I was trying to do these every two weeks, but things have gotten so busy. They've gotten so very busy that I can do one a month and then I do one live light on the path study. There it is over there, that one. Uh, so we do that one live on this channel as well, just trying to build the live audience. Um, you can also follow Living Theosophy on all the things and you see it on uh, Periscope. Periscope, we do a little bit more real life there. So it's not all solely Theosophy uh, on Periscope, but on uh, Instagram, and Twitter and Facebook, it is living theosophy. And theos meaning gods, Sophia meaning wisdom. These are the ancient wisdoms. They are not exclusive um, just from one sect or place. It's not just Helena Petrovna Blavatsky. She is not worshipped here. She is a scribe and she wrote some of them down. They've been written down throughout the ages. Um, and Buddhism is, is similar, uh, but it is not the same. So there's some truth in all of the world's religions. But not one religion has all the truth. That's the definition of omnism, which is a, a term that is I use sometimes to try to explain what is theosophy in my understanding. And this entire channel is simply my own understanding. It has nothing to do with what you um, will find. This is uh, I want to introduce you to these teachings. These ebooks, um, Light on the Path, Voice of the Silence, are free on the website, which is now in transition. It should be livingtheosophy.com very soon. Um, they are, they should always be free and you apply them, become them. You are the temple and the divine spark is within you. Nature is the true church. I love you. I'll see you later.